I'm Javed Malik Jilani and I was born in Pakistan. Uh, my family, uh, my father worked for the Shell Oil Company um, uh, as a senior, a senior executive. Uh, we have a, my siblings, I have a brother who's in business, uh, my sister uh, who's my office manager. Uh, very early on, actually, um, first of all, I was nicknamed by my grandfather. Uh, when I was, I don't remember this, but uh, when I was just two years old, he used to call me a civil surgeon. I don't know what made him do that, but so that, that was the first seed as it were and but without even that I felt that I would like to be a doctor and I would like to be an internist as early as about seven or eight years old. We had uh, we had ten years of uh, school high school after 10 years of high school, you, what, you matriculated after 10 years, you finished high school, and then you did two years of college instead of the four. And you chose your field in, that, in those two years. You could either do free medical, free engineering, business, commerce. And so at the end of those two years, then you competed to go into medical school or engineering school or business school and the competition pretty fierce in getting into med medical school but that's the two years and then it's followed by five years of uh, medical school in 1959 when I went into medical school was equivalent to uh, say 200 rupees a month, which at the moment would be um, two dollars a month. Uh, okay, uh, this was of course just a medical college fee, not boarding and lodging. No one. So, but one could add another 200, so that'd be another two dollars. Uh, but I'm talking about. 1959 dollars, and uh, there were no debts involved in this in this respect. Uh, even then, the 200 dollars, the 200 rupees, or, uh, was not extraordinary. I went back to America. I wanted to do subspecialization. That brought me to America, but what brought me to Delaware is another story. I relatives uh, in Swarthmore, Pennsylvania, which is across, just across the line, uh, and uh, looking for a suitable uh, job. And uh, so the relatives I was staying with, uh, he, uh, he knew a couple of people for, who were there tennis partners and one person sent me to a, a, a doctor who's general medicine, chief of general medicine at Crowley Chester uh, who said, you know, we'd love to have you but I don't have a place here but I have a friend, Bob Flynn, uh, who uh, also is chief of medicine just across. Maybe he has a place. So, uh, because the advantage I had was that my training in Britain was such that the American Board of Internal Medicine wrote me a letter after I sent my CV. They wrote me a letter that, no, we, you don't need any more training in the United States. Uh, that encouraged me to come to America. So I was the last house physician the Department of Medicine ever had. And so I did a year and a half as a house physician at the Wilmington General Hospital uh, and 
that was how I started with so-called Delaware Medical Center. Prior to 9-11, when I arrived in 1960s, uh, 1973 of course, to this country, 73 onwards, fortunately no, I did not feel. But you know, uh, of course, I, I have felt that I was given a, a fair deal, a fair deal uh, for a person who was born over abroad, trained abroad, and to establish a medical practice in North Wilmington, uh, and still been able to, you know, go through all of that, I personally did not. Profiling, not really, not personally, and I've been fair, uh, at least I've never felt it. Mm -hmm. uh, if some people were, they uh, camouflaged it very, very, very well. I think as a general physician uh, in, in this country, uh, I've always had a whole lot of respect for Dr. Marvin Dorf. He was partly also in my call group, and he's the general physician I've always strived to be. Yeah, I think uh, yeah, I think my training in Britain basically helped me um, very much uh, to uh, to practice medicine here, and then subsequently get my boards in internal medicine in this country. Uh, 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 that had, uh, so if you say trained, I felt adequately trained. However, uh, the training is slightly different in Britain. So though I felt equipped to practice, but not uh, equipped very much to do the boards because the boards of inter internal medicine type of ex exam in this is, is very different from the type of board exams in Britain. Yeah, you know, the landscape is completely, is very different. Uh, medicine has changed in the hospital as well as in the office to, to this extent that of course, you know, the demands are higher from and, and practitioners and from the hospital side. The demands meaning that, you know, you, uh, you don't, uh, you, you have to, uh, it's a, if I would say, it's a dot-com world, which means that you just have to uh, get people in and out a bit, a bit much quicker than before. Uh, you are not given enough time to even, you know, kind of ponder over the problems, what they are, because on the, after 24 hours, you're more concerned about how you're discharging the patient. You know, so that has changed. I'm not, I'm not saying that is for the right or the wrong. I think, I think we are still utilizing our resources better now than we were utilizing the resources in the past. Our beds are being utilized better now than they were in the 80s and the 90s. Uh, because I remember patients being admitted for good physicals. And that's not right. Uh, but, but we've swung the other way a little bit too much now. We've got these really very sick people who are there and have to be there only for a very short period of time and we have to be discharging them. So that has changed uh, quite a bit as far as the utilization goes. Uh, it's changed, I'm not saying it's better or worse, but it has changed. And uh, technology, of course, is a lot different than what it was before. We, we didn't carry our cell phones in us and we were not connected all the time. So I, that's where I think the demands on individuals are much more because you're 
your availability is supposed to be. You always have to be available because you end of the phone. Uh, so you're never off the hook, off the call. Uh, but standard of medicine, better now than it was. Utilization, better now than it was. Outcome, question mark. We will see what happens in the next decade. What I always like to stress on is, look, there, is go there are going to be increasing pressures on your time. And uh, those pressures uh, will be, if you're from the hospital, it's from your or office, or families, there'll be in increased pressures. There'll be also economic pressures, uh, how to make it. But you know, you have to fight off those Keep your patient's well-being always in front. Always be that the patient is the most important.